Welcome everyone, Rabbit here, and today I'm going to show you how to mine Raptorium like a boss. Alright, so are you guys ready to mine Raptorium? If you haven't, hit that subscribe button, bell notification, thumbs up, all the good stuff for liking a video, and I will show you how to mine Raptorium the most efficient way with 3900X CPUs. Now this will work on any CPU because it does have a miner that is dedicated to each type of CPU, so please be sure to know what CPU you do have before you get into everything. But I am using 3900X Ryzen CPU, so I will be going over my settings, I'll be going over what wallet I use, I'll be going over the pool I am using, and how to actually tune your CPU for this algorithm when it comes to mining Raptorium. I have already done a how to mine Raptorium video on my other channel when this one was currently taken down, but we do have, do have it back now. So we are doing it again instead of bringing that one over because it wasn't utilizing the optimized miner which i did later on make that raptorium hash rate boost video so now we're combining the two videos into one all for one raptorium video so this would be the ultimate how to mine raptorium video with both of those all wrapped into one now the very first thing you are going to need when it comes to mining any coin is you're going to need the wallet so you can just head over to raptorium.com this is their website right here. You can go to downloads. This is where we will be getting our wallet as well as our CPU miner. But first we're going to get our wallet. So we're just going to click on that. I'm going to right click, go to new tab. That way I still have the main website up and open. And here we can see mandatory update to ensure correct smart node payments. So always get the latest version of the wallet. So here we see Raptorium 1.2. 1.5.2 so you're going to click on that and download it once you do have it finished downloading you are going to want to extract it pick any folder you do want i like to keep all my wallets kind of together in the same place as you can see here then i just click on it and then you just open it right up here and it'll get ready to boot up it does take a few minutes don't worry about that it doesn't mean anything bad is happening or it's not working there we go, it's popping up. And again, it'll take another few minutes. Now, once it does finally open, you will have to download the complete blockchain. And the longer and longer you wait to take this, so depending when you watch this video and when you decide to mine Raptorium, it could be weeks down the road and you'll just have that much longer and more of the blockchain you will have to download. Right now, it takes probably 16 to 18 hours, depending on your internet connection. When I first downloaded this, I think it took me about nine or ten hours so almost half a day and other people that have done it lately it has taken them almost upwards of a day but you can skip this part well not skip the part completely you will need to sit this in the background but you can hide it just click the little hide button you're going to want to go to receive here because you need it we're going to label this so we're going to go video test just to label our actual thing hit the request payment here we're done as you can see this is are the different ones i do have so here we got video test right here we're going to open it up open it up there we go <laughs> double click it open it up you can just copy the address this will be your raptorium address for your wallet next up you're going to need the miner so here we are download cpu miner click on this again this is for windows i will show you how to do it in hive os later on in the video but this is the strictly windows version so we're going to skip this we do not want the beta version i highly recommend never running beta versions whether it comes to your bioses and your motherboards when it comes to uh, drivers for your gpus of course unless it's some leaked dev driver and it does unlock the hash rate then by all means you're all for it but a dedicated version do not run any of the beta versions as it even says here not intended for mining so we're scrolling down and we're going to look at one point 1.9 so this is the miner you are going to want to download again click on it if you do get any type of errors or something you may have to lower the security a little bit just to let it bypass in but then make sure you do turn it right back on again do at your own risk uh i don't trust anybody on the internet so do us please and you are going to need a program like win rare or something to download this your normal win zip will not work because it is a dot 7z file okay so you got your wallet you got your miner but now you need your pool myself i'm using our plant pool a lot of people recommend our pool i just fell in the third place that's all right a lot of people do use our pool and other pools obviously but Pools like our pool, I was going to try, but then I didn't like it. And let me explain to you why. Now, when it comes to Raptorium, it's like Ravencoin, where you want to get lar longer, larger transactions and payouts over a whole bunch of smaller payouts. So, those payments were too small. It was like 
can't remember the actual numbers like f every 50 coins is your minimum payment and they pay out like every couple hours or every hour or something but you cannot change your minimum payment so that means you're getting multiple payments per day depending on the rigs you are running now with our plant you can change your minimum payment I'm using 9000 right here you can see it does require a password and some finicking in the initial setup but don't worry I got you covered I will show you how to get your password into the pool and everything but the reason for it a whole bunch of smaller transactions will actually fill up the block so later on say a year or two goes by you're hodling you see a nice price jump or something you want to sell right away but you will not be able to move everything all at once you're gonna to have to do it in a bunch of transactions because like Ravencoin every time you get a bunch of small transactions it fills up that transaction slot of the block and then it tries to move it all at once so if you have a whole bunch of little ones they start filling up and building on top of each other and you don't have room so larger longer payments are better because later on down the road you will be able to move larger amounts of Raptorium to an exchange or something if you do decide to sell so that's why I did go with our plant pool okay so now we have our wallet we have our miner we have the pool we want to use so now we're gonna go in here I'm just gonna quickly select our plant miner I'm gonna pick I'm using Windows right now I'm in America because that's where I want to be. I'm the closest pool to me, like server-wise. I just want to go up, and you don't need to go any farther. I just want to go up to this point so I can actually get this address right here. So now you're going to open up your miner, and this is where your CPU comes into play, what matters. So you can see they have different types of miners, uh, setup files, depending on the CPU. This uh, workstation I'm in right now is a 5950X, so that is Zen 3. So I'm going to scroll down to my CPU, uh, which is Zen 3 right here. First thing I'm going to do is right-click, go to Properties, go to Compatibility. I'm going to click on Run This Program as an Administrator. You're going to hit Apply and OK, because you always want CPU miners to run as administrator so that it installs the MSR mod. It installs uh, huge pages and everything when it comes to CPU mining. And then you're going to want to run the miner and shut it off. We'll get to that in a minute so that it does load everything. So now we're in our miner. We're going to edit it, edit our actual batch file here. I already do have it set up. So you're going to take this address to the pool and paste it in right here. Next up, you're going to want to go back to your wallet. If you still do not have it saved, click on it, copy your address again, come into here and paste it right beside the U here. Uh, this is always the command with your bat files for your wallet address. So you're going to paste it in right here. Then you're going to want to put a period and then the name of your worker. Now where the password comes into play, after the name of the worker, you're going to want to put a space. You're going to put the same old dash there, P, and then put your password. So I'm just putting password. Now you put whatever password you want. And the first password you use is the one it will always use. So if you forget your password, and you try to change it in here and come in and do your bat file with a different password, it won't work. This first password you do try is the one it's going to use, so write it down somewhere so you do get it. Once you run the miner, let it run for a little bit, and when you are done, you can just get rid of this. But, uh oh I just killed that, so I'm not going to save it because I accidentally did that, but it doesn't matter. So you're going to go into here. Now you are going to double-click this, and it will run. You are going to want to go into your README here right quick as well, and here you can see Tune Full. You're going to want to copy this copy take it out you're going to want to go back into your miner here edit right about there and then boom click bam now you're going to want to tune your cpu after you have your password and your pool and everything set up so now you're going to resave it again with tune full in and this will tune your cpu mine's already tuned obviously so i don't need to do this and you will see a tune config down here now if you already have a tune config I highly recommend to get rid of it and then retune your CPU. Every time I do change settings or overclock settings, I do try to retune my CPU. That way it is maximized based on the settings I did change it to. Okay, and last but not least, let's look at the overclock settings I am using on my CPU. And for this, I do use Ryzen Master when in Windows. Now this video is starting to get pretty long. So this will just be the Windows 10 setup. And I will do the next video probably tomorrow on how to set everything up in Hive OS. So here we are on Ryzen Master here. Now again, this is a 5950X. Now for a 3900X, you're gonna click on Profile 1. Now it doesn't matter if it's Profile 1 or Profile 2, but here you'll click on Profile 1. You're gonna click on Manual. I already have everything here. 
You're going to hit the little down arrows on your threads. Now with the 3900X, because it is 12 core and this one is 16, and the way the dies are, they're a little bit different. So your Ryzen Master will look different, but the theory is still exactly the same. So you will see three rows of four cores on the 3900X. Now you just got to pretty much set this up. You can go all core if you click here, you know, then it'll be individually. Click it on again, then it's all core, so it'll set them all. So what I mean by set them all is once I change this setting, they'll all change. If you put turn this off, then you'll have to do each one individual. So I just click that on, and I set this, just put 3600, hit enter. Make sure you don't have like 36,000 accidentally because that is way too high. Make sure you do double check everything before you actually hit the apply button. But more on that in a second. So we have our 3600, which is 3.6 gigahertz all core. Now we're going to scroll down and you are going to need your volt. So again, just click on it, push one for one volt, and that'll give you your one volt. Now you can probably get away with 0 0.95 volts, which is even less power. It does work on five of my six rigs, but again, silicone lottery and everything. I did have one that re was rebooting, so I did just put everything to one volt, and nothing has had any issues. So these overclocks on a 3900 3900X CPU, as well as the 5950X so far, have seen no issues. These are 100% stable on every CPU I have so far. Just before we do wrap this up, you can see my memory clock, my fabric clock here. This is your RAM timings, your settings here. So this is 3200 megahertz RAM, but I do not have the XMP profile turned on. If I did, then these would both be reading 1600. You always want to leave, uh, or not leave, but you want to run a one-to-one -one ratio. That is where your memory clock and your fabric, fabric clock here are running the same number. So they are a one-to-one -one ratio. That will give you the best performance on Ryzen CPUs. Now you get into some of the higher, like 4,000 megahertz RAMs. Sometimes they might not work out right. Technically, it should be 2,000, 2,000. It might get unstable because some like to run it like, say, 1950 and uh, vice versa, like 920 or 2,010 or whatever. You know, like they'll off-balance themselves. But keep in mind, here you are, XMP profile off. It does seem to run more efficient than having XMP profile on. Now remember, XMP profile on will grant you more performance, but I don't recommend it. And if you do want to totally maximize your hash rate with Ryzen CPUs, I highly recommend because you're running free power, don't care about power, or you're running solar, or really like two cents power, then you can run Ryzen Clock Tuner. Just Google it, it'll pop up, it'll tune your CPU for you. Use DRAM calculator, calculate your RAM timings, put that all into your BIOS, and you are set and you are running max amount of performance on that CPU. So I hope this does help you guys out and get you guys mining Raptorium. Till next time, I'll catch you on the next one. Rabbit out. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you haven't, please comment, subscribe, and like this video, as well as check out one of these other videos if you have not seen it yet. I do try to stream every Saturday and Sunday, so stay tuned for more future content.